Wouldn't it be great if we could bring short-faced bears, saber-toothed tigers, or woolly mammoths back to life? Welcome to our channel, and today we'll be talking about de-extinction, the process to bring extinct species back to life. When we read the headlines or an Instagram shared post of an extinct snow tiger or a particularly pretty plant, we usually feel bad. Today, most extinctions are caused by humans themselves, be it by overhunting, overfishing, introducing invasive species, or even outright contamination. However, there might be a chance to revive the Pyrenean ibex, the dodo, the short-faced bear, and many other unfortunate animals that have met the fate of extinction. There are currently several ways to do it, although not all of them are exactly effective for obvious reasons. If they were, then we'd have all sorts of animals resurrected once more. First, we have cloning, the most widely proposed method, and after it, we have genome editing and selective breeding. Some of these techniques have been used with endangered species to hopefully boost populations, although the only method that would provide an animal with the same kind of genetic identity as the original species is, of course, cloning. Ignoring the obvious ethical issues that arise from cloning, there's still a lot to work on and advance in the field of cloning to make it work. As a matter of fact, de-extinction has technically been achieved before. It was July 30th, 2003 that a team of both Spanish and French scientists managed to bring back an animal from extinction, although it quickly became extinct again once more. The revived animal was a Bacardo, a Pyrenean ibex that used to live in the High Pyrenees where it used to walk and clamber along the cliffs, nourish itself on leaves and stems, and spend harsh winters on the mountaintops. However, hunters drove the Bacardo numbers down, and by 1989, Spanish scientists concluded that only a dozen or so of these majestic animals remained. So a team of scientists caught the last remaining Bacardo, a female named Celia, and clipped a radio collar around her neck. They released her back into the wild to know exactly when the Bacardo population would officially reach zero. And nine months later, the radio caller let them know with a deadly beep that Celia had died, crushed under a fallen tree. However, they kept Celia's cells in a lab and injected them into goat eggs, which were then implanted into 57 surrogate mother goats, of which only seven became pregnant. Of these seven, six ended in miscarriages, however, one managed to carry a Celia clone to term, and they eventually delivered it through a cesarean section. Though they had effectively resurrected a Celia clone through hard effort, it only took her 10 minutes to officially die. That's because one of her lungs had grown a gigantic extra lobe. The case is even more complex for species we had no chance to directly preserve their DNA. For example, the saber-toothed tiger the short-faced bear, or the woolly mammoth because DNA degrades over time and it's almost impossible to resurrect a dinosaur because the limit of DNA survival needed for de-extinction is probably around a million years. So, those are the main risks of cloning to resurrect an extinct species. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of money, and might end up in needless animal pain or death due to genetic malformations. So what do you think? Do you think it's impossible to bring extinct species back to life? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and also subscribe to our channel for more great videos like this one. We hope you enjoyed our video, and we'll see you next time.